Welcome to Ahoy TV. Uh, thank you for joining in today, guys. I'm going to talk to you and walk you through the process of checking to see if your occupation uh, meets the type of work experience that you can use to qualify for the DV, which is the green card in Ludwig. All right. Um, so for us to begin with this process, we will look at the uh, the DV Ludwig uh, instructions, and then I'll walk you through the journey. But guys, if this is your first time here, please click the subscribe button, share this video with your friends and family so that they too, they can learn about uh, what I'm about to show you. Um, as we all know, or if you didn't know, um, the Greek I would really has uh, two main requirements. The first one is to be from a qualifying country. So that one is out of the way. That one, there's nothing you can do about it. But a second requirement is you use uh, a successful completion of uh, secondary school education or successful completion of secondary school education or you use two years of work experience in the last five years from a field that requires two years of preparation or training to perform, okay? So your job must require at least two years of training or preparation to perform. And then you must have two years of experience in the last five years from this job. So now let's go straight to the video. All right, guys. So first off, we're going to go to the DV Lottery instruction. So we'll go to this link. All right. And let me zoom in on this one. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the requirement. And you know, these are the eligibility requirements that I talked about. But here is the part that we are interested in is each DV applicant must meet the education or work experience requirement of the DV program by having either at least a high school education or its equivalent. Guys, when they say high school education, they're saying that it's defined as successful completion of a 12 year course of formal elementary and secondary education. Okay, that is what is defined by high school education. So if your country has junior high school, that is not what they're talking about. They're talking about secondary education, completion of that, or two years of work experience within the past five years in an occupation that requires at least two years of training or experience to perform. The State Department will use the U.S. Department of Labor's ONET online database to determine qualifying work experience. Okay. Now, so this is what is they're going to do. So we're going to go to the website that they're going to use to determine whether your job qualifies. Uh, but before we go there, let's move on to one other thing on when we find the job, how do we know that the job qualifies or not, right? Um, okay. So here, what occupations qualify for the DV program? And then here, so it says you go to the ONET online database to identify qualifying work experience. Database categorizes job experience into five zones. So to qualify for DV on the basis of work experience, you must have within the past five years, two years of experience and occupation classified in specific vocational preparation SVP range of seven or higher. You know, guys, I think I have used the word special vocational preparation. It's specific, all right? I know in the past I've used special vocational uh, preparation, but it is specific vocational preparation. And it has to be seven or higher. So now let's go to the website. Okay, so on this site, let me increase the size of the page. All right, so on this side, the first thing we'll do is just type in the keyword of the job that we're looking for. So I'm going to type teacher. 
And I'm not going to select from any option here. I'm just so that I don't select any of the suggestions and then click on the search all next uh, occupation. All right. So this is where it brings us. So now we're going to look through and see which one matches what we're looking for. So let's say that this person or this teacher is a secondary school teacher. So here we have secondary school teachers accept special and career slash technical education. So in this one, it means that if you're a special education or technical or career education teacher, it's not this one. You, you shouldn't click on this one, okay? You shouldn't use this one. You see, this is the career slash technical education for secondary school. Their option is here. So we are going to go to that one, all right? Guys, that is why I always tell you that you need to, you know, do it yourself because you know your job title, what you do. When we come over here, you have to read the title up here, this bold letter here, secondary school teachers accept special and career slash technical education to make sure that you click on what you wanted to click. And then here it says teach one or more subjects to students at the secondary school level. So are you a teacher? They are just giving a little bit like a brief description of what this occupation uh, does. People in this occupation, what they do. And then here you're going to look at the sample of reported job titles. Uh, and, and the examples here are uh, art teacher, English teacher, high school science teacher, history teacher, mathematics teach instructor, sorry, math instructor, science teacher, secondary uh, teacher, social studies teacher, Spanish teacher, teacher. So if you're a teacher in the secondary school level with these specific subjects, then uh, you should look in here. Special and career technical education are not under here. So if you're, um, you know, maybe vocational, vocational, um, you're a visual arts teacher and stuff, you may want to look under the career and technical education part. But anyway, let's come over here. You will look at the task, the task, and you read the description and see if the job that you're trying to use to qualify, are there some descriptive words or keywords does it describe your role here it says prepare materials and classroom for class activities instruct through lectures discussions and demonstration in one or more subjects such as english mathematics or social studies establish clear objectives for all subjects units and projects and communicate those objectives to students Establish and enforce rules for behavior and procedures for maintaining order among students. Adapt teaching methods and instructional materials to students' varying needs and interests, okay? So here I know it says English, mathematics, or social studies, but if your, you know, um, if your subject is not listed here, so long as it's not special education or technical or career education, then and you teach in secondary school, you could fall under this, all right? If you find maybe several of the description here match your job, then that is it, okay? So now what we'll do is that we'll come down to this uh, this part. And it's work experience requirement. Guys, because it's work experience that we're going to use to qualify for the green card lottery, especially for some of you, if you're not going to use your senior high school or your secondary school certificate because maybe your grades are not great or you didn't really go to secondary school. Um, then here is your option uh, using the work experience. So the work experience, we're looking at the job zone, okay? The job zone here says that uh, considerable preparation needed, um, you can read some of the information here. It is up to you to uh, read those things. But um, like I said, it's up to you to get more information or to gain more understanding of what you're looking at. But what is important to us is the SVP range, which is specific vocational preparation range. And this is, it takes two to four years for you to be trained to be a teacher. That is what it's saying. So the SVP rating for this job is seven and seven to eight, but it's not above eight, from seven to eight. And remember that the instructions for the Greek outloader, the requirement says that the job that has SVP of seven or higher. So now 
we have seven and it's even more than seven. So if your job is this, then you can use this one as long as you have the two years experience addition, okay? You are not just using the two years. So let's say you went to a teacher training college. It took you two years or three years or four years to be trained to be a teacher. That is not what you're using as your work experience. But after you are a teacher, we need you to have two years of experience minimum within the last five years, okay? So you're not going to count your training for that occupation. You're not going to count those years that you, it took you to train to, be, to do that job, all right? Okay, now let's go back and I will uh, look at another job, all right? Um, let's say somebody is uh, a pastor. A pastor. Okay, so let's see if they will find something for us as a pastor. Okay, as we say in the rest of the world. A pastor, you look here and see, okay, which one means the, um, let's see, religious workers uh, here and religious teachers, you know. So we're looking here and we're like, okay, let's see, clergy. The clergy uh, is closer. Let's see. The clergy conducts religious worship and perform other spiritual functions associated with beliefs and practices of religious faith or denomination, provide spiritual and moral guidance and assistance to members. So sample of reported job titles, Catholic priest, children's minister, confessor, congregational care pastor, minister, missionary coordinator, pastor. You see that there's a pastor here, priest, rabbi, rector, okay? So if you are imam, you are also under this, okay? Even though it doesn't mention your name here, but we're going to look at the task. It says, pray and promote sp spirituality. Read from sacred texts such as the Bible, Torah, or Quran. So if you read from the Quran, then Imam also falls under this. And then prepare and deliver sermon or other talks. Organize and lead regular religious services. Plan or lead religious education program. So that is part of the job of a priest, a minister, missionary coordinator, pastor, rabbi, and all of that. So let's come here. This is the part that we need to look. So here it says, job zone is five, extensive preparation needed, okay? Um, they say most of these occupations require graduate school, for example, they may require master's degree and some require PhD, MD, or JD. It doesn't mean that you need these requirements. They said most, it doesn't mean all of them. Look at the SVP, it says over four years of preparation. So it's eight and above. So it means that if somebody has this job title, they qualify. But let me uh, give you a little bit of advice before we go on to look at another job as an example. If you are using this job, if you're a clergy, a member of the clergy, and you're using your job as a pastor, um, as a priest, as uh, an imam, as um, a rabbi, then please make sure that you have the training, you've gone to the training in that field, okay? If you are a pastor, then you need to make sure that you have gone to a pastoral school, you have your certificate, stuff to show that you have gone through adequate training to do that job, okay? If being a rabbi require that you go into some training in order to become a rabbi, you have to maybe serve a minister before you become a rabbi, whatever training that is required for that job, you need to make sure that you have fulfilled those requirements. And when you go for the interview and they ask you specific questions about that job, you should be able to answer them, all right? So it's not about you being a Facebook pastor and all of a sudden um, you are ready to use that to qualify for the job when you don't even have the training of a pastor. You don't have the training that you need to become a rabbi. So I'm not saying that there's an official training, but in every religion, they have series of steps that you need to go through in order to be, in order for you to become, you know, a leader. Okay. 
for you to become a, an imam, you don't just get up and say, I am an imam. I'm sure there are some, you know, process you go through to become an imam. If you want to be a pastor, there is a training that you need to go through to become a pastor. So if you're going to use any of these occupations, just make sure that you have the training that is required in that field. All right. So guys, let me check one other job and then hopefully this can help you look and see if your job qualifies. Let me look at this electrician. Electrician. Well, there's, uh, I'm going to click the suggestion here. All right. So electricians install, maintain and repair electrical wiring equ equipment and fixtures. Ensure that work is in accordance with relevant codes. May install or service street lights intercom system or systems or electrical control systems. So the sample of reported job titles. So this is basically an example of jobs that will fall under electrical or electrician. So control electrician, electrical journey person, electrical troubleshooter, electrician, housing maintenance electrician, industrial electrician, inside wireman, maintenance electrician, paper mail electrician, wireman. So if your title falls in here, so let's say you're just an electrician or you are a housing maintenance electrician, but let's say you're an electrician. Now we'll look at the occupation specific information. Here is the task, prepare sketches, or follow blueprints to determine the location of wiring or equipment and to ensure conformance to building and safety codes. Place conduit pipes or tubing inside designated partitions, walls or concealed areas. Pull and pull insulated wires or cables through the conduit to, to complete circuits between boxes. Work from ladders, scaffolds, or roofs to install, maintain, or repair electrical wiring equipment or fixtures. Use a variety of tools or equipment such as power construction equipment, measuring devices, power tools, or test equipment and test equipment and testing equipment such as oscilloscopes, uh, ammeters, or test lamps. Assemble, install, test, or maintain electrical or electronic wiring, equipment, appliances, apparatus, or fixtures using hand tools or power tools. So guys, just read through this and see if your job, what you do, does it describe anything about your job in here? Now let's go to the job zone, okay? Uh, it says medium preparation needed. Um, and so it says most occupation in this zone require training in vocational schools related on the job experience or an associate degree. OK, so guys, when you look at this, the SVP, it says it takes one to two years of preparation. SVP is six to seven or six to under seven. All right, guys, if your job zone is here, um, depending on your work experience, if you have an immense knowledge and expertise in your field, and you're able to show your expertise from that field, you could be approved your visa. But if you have few years of experience in this job and uh, the training school that you went to, it was just one year of training and you're not able to speak well when they ask you certain things, certain specifics about your job, how you do this, how do you do that, um, what do you call this, and you cannot answer them, then you're not going to get your visa. So if your job zone falls within something like this, if you look at your job and the SVP is, you know, six to seven, which is kind of like on the borderline, then you have to be really prepared to answer your uh, questions about your profession with expertise so that um, they can uh, use that and approve your visa. If your SVP is lower than this, then it doesn't qualify. Then you have to rely on your um, education, okay? Let me look at one last one. I said this was going to be the last one, but let's see. Um, cook. Let's say people 
who work in fast food restaurants and stuff, okay? Uh, being a cook, okay? So let's say that this person works as um, at a fast food. Let's do that. This person is a cook. So here you read the description and all that. And so let's look here. Let's go to the SVP. This is below four. So this job does not qualify. This job does not qualify. So if your job is a cook in fast food restaurant, then it doesn't qualify. Let's go to restaurant, actual like good restaurant. Um, that too doesn't qualify. Let's go to somebody who say, I'm a chef or a head cook. Look at this. Uh, banquet chef, certified executive chef, chef cook, executive chef, um, executive sous chef, head cook, kitchen manager, pastry chef, sous chef. Let's go straight to the SVP. So this is also around here. So guys, let's see. If this is going to be your, um, if this is your job title, guys, then you could, you know, show expertise, but you must have this title as a chef. And before you call yourself a chef, please make sure that you have the trainings. You have the training. You went to, you see, most of the occupation in this zone require training, vocational schools and all that. You must get the training and certificate to prove that you are a chef. It's not a one man restaurant and then you call yourself a chef. You start your own business and you're like, I'm a chef. You need to go through the process of becoming a chef. Let's see, somebody's a baker. You bake uh, pastries and stuff. Look, pastry chef, uh, cake decorator, baker. Look at that. Let's go and see. This is less than what is required. This does not qualify. So guys, I hope that this gives you an idea on how to look for your job and see if your job qualifies. So guys, thank you so much for your time and for your kindness and your patience. In the next video, I'll make a tutorial for a soldier, those who are in the military. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. And guys, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the Facebook page, uh, Wofoy TV is the name on um, most of the social media platform. On TikTok, it's Ikea Wofoy. I join my Greek Art Lottery groups, Greek Art Lottery dash Africa, Greek Art Lottery dash Ghana, Greek Art Lottery dash Venice. You know, the Greek Art Lottery application is ongoing for DV 2024, and it started on October 5th uh, in the year 2022, this year, and it will go on through uh, November 8, 2022. So you still have a little bit of time to uh, apply, but please make sure you check to see if you qualify. If you don't qualify yet, then you must find out, you know, prepare in how you'll be able to meet the qualification if you should get selected, okay? So let's say you may have few years of experience in your job. Um, let's say you have one and a half years or you have one year of experience. Um, then you have to make sure you stay in that field and hopefully you will be two years at least by the time you go for your interview. So you don't need to meet the requirement completely when you're using your job experience before uh, you apply, especially when it's talking about you having a minimum of two years of experience. But if you are close, then you look at, okay, um, will I be able to have two years of experience by the time I go for the interview or by the time the fiscal year ends, will I be able, by September 30th, 2024, will I be able to have the two years experience that I need, all right? So guys, thank you so much for your time, uh, for your patience, for your kindness, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.